So in this video we're going to take a look at some of the big four-wheel drive wagons on the market and how much they can really tow because it doesn't matter how nicely they drive or how good they look or how powerful they are if the numbers don't add up the numbers don't add up so the vehicles we're going to look at jeep grand cherokee new 300 series done quite a few videos on that the y62 the l663 defender that's the seven seat variant that does make a difference um in your screen idea i do have some information on that four seater sorry seven seater from discovery discovery again um the BMW X7 which is not a choice you'd often look at for towing three and a half tons but it is rated if you have to tow it and two vehicles from Mercedes. Okay now the things we're going to cover power to weight ratio, um, the range, how far you can drive, how safe the vehicles are and I'm going to be using terms such as GVM, payload, GCM and more. If you're not sure what they mean I do have other videos on my website explaining them and then after the safety, we'll get into the payload, how much it can actually carry, uh, the maximum tow ball mass, which is always critical, particularly for Australian vehicles with our heavy tow ball masses, how much payload you can carry if you were going to tow a three and a half tonne trailer. Um, if you're going to tow a three tonne trailer, which is a bit more realistic, um, with a 280 kilogram tow ball mass, how much payload would you have then? Um, and then, okay, you're going to take a 500 kilogram payload in the car, how much can you then tow? And finally, um, if you were going to tow a three and a half ton trailer uh, with a 350 kilogram table mass, how much payload have you got left? Okay, now all of these nine cars all have basically good tow car specs. They're all rated to three and a half tons brake tow capacity. Their weight varies from uh, 20, about 22.8 to 2.8. That's the patrol, which is the heaviest. Now, if there's one thing which makes a good tow car, it's actually a heavy weight. Look at my model tow car video just to prove that point. They're all all-wheel drive. That makes a difference in traction. Um, it can even make a difference in slowing down and backing the trailer as well. They're all automatics with seven to 10 speeds, which is great. Um, some of the vehicles such as the Land Rovers have air suspension which is really handy for just keeping that vehicle level and even makes a difference when you are um, backing it up to hook it up and um, particularly when you're off-road. Um, wheelbase is pretty much same same, the longer wheelbase the better generally for towing doesn't make a huge difference though. Um, length is about the same there as well with the Grenadier and the Defender they've got rear mounted spares that needs to be accounted for there and they've all got trailer stability control at least I assume the Grenadier will have I wasn't able to confirm it. Okay, now um, some of the things to look at generally when you're looking at these weights, you want to look at your maximum tow, obviously, and that's your headline figure, um, the curb weight of the vehicle, and then the GVM, how much it can weigh. The difference between those two is the payload, and that's a really important part of real world towing capabilities. You want to look at your gross combined mass, which is the combination of trailer and tow car, your maximum tow ball mass, and also the rear axle load, which I haven't gone into for this detail. Now, something really important here is that you've got to be really specific about your make and model that you're doing your calculations for because it will vary according to the engine, the transmission, the, the trim if it's a GXL, Sahara, SE or S or whatever the case may be, whether it needs a tow pack and also the model year. Now, if all of this is a bit complicated, just go to my website, use this towing calculator, plug in the numbers and that will tell you what you need to know for your specific configuration. All right, now with the Grenadier, um, I wasn't able to speak to, uh, or Grenadier weren't able to return any of my emails or contacts for this. I did get information out of Mercedes and BMW, but I did find this on the uh, internet and I think I can draw a few conclusions from it enough to make this video. The first is that 3,500 is clearly the GVM, so that tells us something. Um, and the 7,000 must be the GCM, the combined mass, so that's good. And media reports confirm that. And the 1,621.50, um, have to be the front and rear axle load limits. So out of that we can draw a few conclusions. Um, the curb weight we know is going to be 26, 2700, that's what the media reports are saying and that's also consistent with the sort of vehicle it is, live axles and its dimensions. Um, that means that they're going to struggle to get to that 1000 kilogram uh, payload um, because that would mean that weight needs to be 2500 and unless it's a petrol with really light wheels, I'm not sure, and only two seats, I'm not sure they're going to get there. Um, so the payload 
load I think at this point is probably going to be 900 to 800 kilograms. Um, what is good is that if you take the sum of the front and rear axle loads it comes out to 250 kilograms more than the GVM which gives you sort of front rear load flexibility which is great. But I'm going to work on the Grenadier having a 900 kilogram payload for the purposes of this video. Now a quick bit on the Defender just to reinforce what I was saying about um, how the specs vary across different trim levels. So depending on whether the vehicle's got a 5 or 7 seat, it's got a different GVM and a different GCM. Um, but you can see here that with the SE, the, um, the D300 and the, versus the P300, there's different unladen weights which you would expect, um, but there's also a range of different GVMs as well and that the combination of different unladen weights and payloads actually gives us, um, sorry, different unladen weights and GVMs gives us quite different payloads as well. Now I've used the term unladen weight here because when you talk about curb weight or tear weight or unladen weight, the three are slightly different things and even the definitions of curb or tear vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So it's a real minefield trying to get consistent unladen weights across all the different car makers. I've done my best um, to do that, but they still vary a bit. So unladen is the best way to consider it. It varies with things like how much fuel you've got in it, whether you've got an allowance for the driver, just so many things. And then also that's exclusive of things like tow bars as well in most vehicles. Okay, so that's the preamble done. Now we're gonna get into the specifications and Maximum power and torque is not really the be all and end all of a tow car by any means, but everybody wants to know about it, so here we go. I've, um, worked, I've said whether it's petrol or diesel, maximum power, maximum torque, number of gears, which is important as well. The more gear ratios up to a point, the better. Um, and then kilowatts per kilogram at GCM. So, which is the least? Well, I think it's probably going to be the Grenadier and the reason I'm going to say that is because it's relatively heavy and it's got that BMW 6 cylinder, I'm going off the diesel here, the Grenadier is available in petrol and diesel um, and I think it's the same engine as in the X7 which produces those numbers. I imagine that would be downrated a bit um, for use in the Grenadier which by the way is a good thing because you want reliability and you want um, uh, you know, a lack of sensitivity to weird and wonderful um, diesel uh, mixes. So I think it's going to be good. So my guess is it's going to be around about those figures and um, that would give us 38 kilograms. Um, so each kilowatt has to shift 38 kilograms. And next is the X7 um, and then the Grand Cherokee, uh, Defender, Discovery, and all the way down and the winner is the patrol because of course that's the most powerful sort of Y62 people are now cheering but then we're also saying hang on you've done it off um, kilowatts that's power to weight but for towing we want torque well yes and no this whole sort of torque and towing business is a little bit overrated because you can double the torque figure of virtually all of these vehicles at a stroke. So let's, we could double it um, in the patrol, for example. We could go from 560 newton meters to over 1300, just like that. You know how? You put the vehicle into low range. You've now got double or more than double the amount of torque at the wheels. You tell me how that's going to go for you towing. And then that's why we need to look at power, not just torque. And I think power is the more appropriate uh, measure for this. Um, feel free to battle it out in the comments. And if we can't resolve it, I'll do another video and explain it. So next up is range. Now that's important because when you tow a heavy trailer, that's got a huge effect on fuel consumption and you don't want to be stopping every five minutes for fuel. So what I've done here is I have um, subtracted eight litres for a reserve out of the fuel capacity out of each vehicle and then I've taken the ADR combined figure for fuel consumption and I've increased that by 60% and then I've used that to calculate a range. So at the lowest point we got to the um, Mercedes only at 557 kilometres, then the Patrol which has got the biggest fuel tank but obviously pretty thirsty with that petrol V8 so not a huge range and the X7, the GLE, Defender, Discovery, Grand Cherokee and then the winner is the 300 series on account of the fact it's got the largest tank and is diesel although it's not the best on fuel consumption. Now the Grenadier I just don't have enough data um, I can't even make an educated guess on it so I don't know what the figures are so I'm just leaving that off here. I will say however that the Patrol, the Grand Cherokee and um, the 300 series will in time all have aftermarket long range tanks so you can actually improve their range um, that way however that does start to eat into your payload and potentially uh, reduce the amount of t weight you can put on your trailer.
Now, next up is safety, and that's important for crashworthiness. Now, I could at this point go into a long rant or explanation about what's wrong with the ANCAP safety rating system, which I think is good in theory, but quite flawed in its implementation. But anyway, let's, let's go through it. So the Grenadier doesn't have a safety rating. I don't know if it will ever have a safety rating because it's going to be a niche vehicle and niche vehicles tend not to get tested. Um, and I also don't know how much um, Grenadier have, uh, any of us have done about safety. So I'm putting that one uh, lowest. Patrol Y62 hasn't been tested and it's also an old design. So I'm assuming that's probably um, up there were one of the least safe of the nine vehicles. Um, the Grand Cherokee hasn't been tested either but it's the newest design so I'm just going to place that ahead of the patrol um, and Jeep have not been noted for being amazing on safety look just look at the Wrangler for example very low um, safety score there. Um, Mercedes hasn't tested their vehicle either but Mercedes are really hot on um, safety generally and a lot of their cars are five star and these haven't been tested and same for the BMW largely because they're expensive and they're pretty um, uh, low, low volume sellers so I assume if they were tested I'm fairly confident they would get five stars. Um, the LC300 hasn't been tested but that has got to be a five star vehicle because if it isn't it's not going to sell into fleets and if it's not into fleet it's going to go nowhere so I'm very confident that will get its five star. Then we get into the vehicles which actually have been tested and the first of these and this is an intentional order is the Discovery which got its five star rating but back in 2017 so it places its um, so therefore it's beaten by the GLE which also got a five star rating but it got it in 2019 and that's beaten by the Defender which got its five star rating in 2020. So there is the rough order I would put the vehicles in for safety um, whether they've got a five star rating or not. Now that will actually change a little bit depending on the trim model the sort of active and passive safety aids it's etc but it does give you a bit of an idea. All right, now we're into the towing weights and the first of these is payload. A big payload is really important for towing capacity. Now the calculation is probably the simplest which is simple GVM minus unladen mass but bear in mind my comments earlier on about how unladen mass varies widely from manufacturer to manufacturer and obviously from model to model. So the lowest payload is the Jeep Grand Cherokee and these blue bars indicate how well the vehicle is relative to the rest of them. Then the patrol, um, at the end of 300 a um, bit disappointing with the 300 after all that development hardly any payload increase the Europeans do actually really well for payload which is kind of surprising um, Defender, Discovery come up, the X7, the GLE and it looks like the Grenadier is going to win that um, again we don't know the exact curb weight of it but I'm just going to run with it um, with a 900 kilogram payload which give it a 2600 um, tear but even if it wasn't quite that much I think it would um, probably still pretty much win so first win to the Grenadier there and um, bad luck to, to the Jeep with a low payload. So tow ball mass. Now you hear a lot about must have 10% tow ball mass or even more. That is not necessarily the case. 10% is just a rough guideline. I don't know what it's based on. It's certainly not based on any testing that I've seen. My personal caravan is around 2300 kilograms and I towed it at 6 to 8% and it tows fine because I've managed to centralise the weight um, quite a bit. Now that said, I do think it's important that you should have the capability to have 10% of your tow ball, um, of your trailer weight as tow ball mass and that's what I'm rating here. So the first three vehicles, the Mercedes and the BMW, are typical of Europeans in as much that they don't have 10% of the maximum tow as their uh, tow ball mass. They've only got 280, which is 8%. And the rest of the vehicles, um, as you can see there, have 10% or 350 kilograms. Now the question mark there is the Grenadier. I'm giving Ineos the benefit of the doubt there. I assume that will be 10% as are all of the rest. So let's assume you've got a three and a half ton trailer. You're going to hook it up and you want to know how much payload you've got left. So the first thing you've got to do there is look at the difference between your vehicle's GVM, how much it can weigh, the maximum, and its maximum tow. You add those together and see if there's a difference to the official gross combined mass, which is how much they're legally meant to weigh together a maximum and that's what I've calculated here um, and then we work out the payload out of that so um, with the Grand Cherokee there's a big difference between the GCM and the sum of the GVM and the maximum tow so that actually counts against it when you are trying to do some of these sums um, and that payload is only 318 um, kilograms um, same deal for the Mercedes 155 um, kilograms is the difference there and Toyota for some reason have broken with tradition 
application and reduced um, it by 30 kilograms for the 300. I don't know why the 200, it, it, was, it was zero. Um, and patrol, it's zero. Defender, zero. And all the rest of them, it's zero. Apart from the GLE 400, it's 100 kilograms over. Why? I don't know. Just kind of weird. Um, and the Grenadier, um, I'm going to assume um, that is zero as well. So basically that means that um, these vehicles in green um, have the best chance of towing three and a half tonnes legally. All right, now I don't suggest that you tow three and a half tonnes with any of these vehicles. If you want to do that, get yourself something um, like an Isuzu NPS or a Cantor or one of the big uh, American trucks like, like the Rams. But if, um, so that's why I've gone for a 3,000 kilogram uh, tow here and I've gone for a 280 kilogram tow ball mass um, in deference to the European vehicles just to um, keep them in the mix so slightly artificial. Um, now if we do that the payload we've got left is only 388 kilograms for the Grand Cherokee, Patrol 408, um, GXL 420, 504, 529, and now this is where we're starting to get up into useful figures here. 388 is just, just not enough. Um, um, 570 GLS and then the Grenadier wins it again um, with 620 on those figures. So this is a really important one for towing. Um, how much payload you've got left if you want to tow a three tonne trailer. All right, now even though I don't recommend towing three and a half tonnes with these cars, I've done the maths anyway. So three and a half tonnes, 350 kilograms TBM, um, how much payload do you have left? And the answer with the Grand Cherokee is 318, 338, 350, 459, Grenadier wins and then those three are not applicable because you've exceeded their total um, mass limit. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to take a 500 kilogram um, payload and we're going to put it in the car and we're going to see how much we can tow whilst carrying 500 kilograms, which is actually a really relevant calculation for heavy towers. Um, and basically that will give us an amount of payload left for the tow ball mass and often that's going to dictate the size of the trailer we can tow. So it starts to get complicated. All right, so with the um, Grand Cherokee, remember it had a 666 kilogram payload? Well, we take 500 kilograms off that and we're left with 168 kilograms, which is as much a total mass as we can put on the vehicle. I'm excluding rear axle load calculations here. So I'm going to multiply that by 10 for 10%. Now you could basically look at maybe 12%, 15%, something like that, but I'm going to run with 10 because it makes it easy. Um, that means that realistically you're towing a trailer 1680 kilograms maximum um, and let, let maybe call it two tonnes. So nowhere near three and a half tonnes if you have a 500 kilogram payload. Now the patrol doesn't do much better, that's only got 188 kilograms of payload left, so we multiplied it out and it's still that's not reaching 2 tonnes. The 300 does a little bit better, so that gives us, that's 200 kilograms of payload left, it's got that 700 kilogram total payload figure, that gives us um, a 2000 kilogram trailer, um, maybe, but again, uh, if you want to run less than 10%, and you can do, maybe that's 2.5, so we're starting to get better there. The GLS, now that's actually... Um, got a maximum total mass of 280 kilograms, remember, so we're actually within limits here, so that's 2840. Um, um, and the Defender, its maximum total mass is 350, so it's not really um, quite up there yet, just a little bit low, so but at 309 kilograms of towable mass, I'd suggest you should be able to tow a three and a half ton trailer if it's properly set up. And then the rest are looking pretty good as well. And then the last three here um, actually have 350 kilograms or more payload left over, which means that when you take your towable mass of 350 kilograms and you take it out of the GVM, you've still got more than 500 kilograms left. So it's these vehicles in darker green which do really well on that and the lighter green ones kind of so-so. These are starting to really be um, struggling with a 500 kilogram payload. Okay, so that's the analysis run through. Now some not really recommendations because this is so personal to your specific situation. But if you want an off-road oriented tow car, then I would suggest the ones that I've circled in green are the way to go. These three down here, they're luxurious. They've actually got really great all-wheel drive systems, but they're fantastic for things like shallow mud and snow. They're definitely not off-road vehicles. They don't have the suspension, the clearance, spare tires, or anything else like that. Out of all of these though, I'd be confident taking any of them. 
them uh, off-road. Now, if we then look at um, which is the best for just towing heavy trailers, well, I'm going to put green circles around these three. All of them can do the job to a greater or lesser degree, but I'm going to circle these three because I think that if you just look at their payload, their weights, their GCM, everything else, they tend to sort of rise above um, the rest of the vehicles. Now that said, if you want to tow more than about three tonnes, I would be looking at something like a modified uh, four-wheel drive truck or a large uh, American ute. Those are really much better vehicles for towing three tonnes plus than any of those nine previously. So I hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. Please like, subscribe, share, etc. And any questions you've got, drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.